The Antiquities of the Jews, Volume 2, by Flavius Josephus, Book 9, Chapters 13 and 14. Chapter 13. How Pekah died by the treachery of Hoshea, who was a little after subdued by Shalmaneser, and how Hezekiah reigned instead of Ahaz, and what actions of piety and justice he did. About the same time Pekah, the king of Israel, died by the treachery of a friend of his, whose name was Hoshea, who retained the kingdom nine years' time, but was a wicked man and a despiser of the divine worship. And Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, made an expedition against him and overcame him, which must have been because he had not God favorable or assistant to him, and brought him to submission and ordered him to pay an appointed tribute. Now in the fourth year of the reign of Hoshea, Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, began to reign in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Abijah, a citizen of Jerusalem. His nature was good and righteous and religious, for when he came to the kingdom, he thought that nothing was prior, nor more necessary, or more advantageous to himself and to his subjects, than to worship God. Accordingly, he called the people together, and the priests, and the Levites, and made a speech to them, and said, You are not ignorant how, by the sins of my father, who transgressed that sacred honor which is due to God, you have had experience of many and great miseries, while you were corrupted in your mind by him, and were induced to worship those which he supposed to be gods. I exhort you, therefore, who have learned by sad experience how dangerous a thing impiety is, to put that immediately out of your memory, and to purify yourselves from your former pollutions, and to open the temple to these priests and Levites who are convened, and to cleanse it with the accustomed sacrifices, and to recover all to the ancient honor which our fathers paid to it. For by this means we may render God favorable, and he will remit the anger he hath had to us. When the king had said this, the priests opened the temple, and when they had set in order the vessels of God, and eased out what was impure, they laid the accustomed sacrifices upon the altar. The king also sent to the country that was under him, and called the people to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of unleavened bread, for it had been intermitted a long time, on account of the wickedness of the forementioned kings. He also sent to the Israelites, and exhorted them to leave off their present way of living, and return to their ancient practices, and to worship God, for that God, for that he gave them leave to come to Jerusalem, and to celebrate, all in one body, the feast of unleavened bread. And this he said was by way of invitation only, and to be done of their own good will, and for their own advantage and not out of obedience to him, because it would make them happy. But the Israelites, upon the coming of the ambassadors, and upon their laying before them what they had in charge from their own king, were so far from complying therewith, that they laughed the ambassadors to scorn, and mocked them as fools, as also they affronted the prophets, which gave them the same exhortations, and foretold what they would suffer if they did not return to the worship of God insomuch that at length they caught them and slew them. Nor did this degree of transgressing suffice them, but they had more wicked contrivances than what had been described. Nor did they leave off before God, as a punishment for their, for their impiety, brought them under their enemies. But of that more hereafter. However, many there were of the tribe of Manasseh, and of Zebulon, and of Issachar, who were obedient to what the prophets exhorted them to do, and returned to the worship of God. Now all these came running to Jerusalem, to Hezekiah, that they might worship God there. When these men were come, King Hezekiah went up into the temple, with the rulers and all the people, and offered for himself seven bulls, and as many rams, with seven lambs, and as many kids of the goats. The king also himself, and the rulers, laid their hands on the heads of the sacrifices, and permitted the priests to complete the sacred offices about them. So they both slew the sacrifices, and burnt the burnt offerings, while the Levites stood round about them, with their musical instruments, and sang hymns to God, and, pl and played on their psalteries, as they were instructed by David to do. 
and this while the rest of the priests returned the music, and sounded the trumpets which they had in their hands. And when this was done, the king and the multitude threw themselves down upon their face, and worshipped God. He also sacrificed seventy bulls, one hundred rams, and two hundred lambs. He also granted the multitude sacrifices to feast upon, six hundred oxen, and three thousand other cattle. And the priests performed all things according to the law. Now the king was so pleased herewith, that he feasted with the people, and returned thanks to God. But as the feast of unleavened bread was now come, when they had offered that sacrifice which is called the Passover, they after that offered other sacrifices for seven days. When the king had bestowed on the multitude, besides what they had sanctified of themselves, two thousand bulls and thousand other cattle, the same thing was done by the rulers. For they gave them a thousand bulls and a thousand and forty other cattle. Nor had this festival been so well observed from the days of King Solomon, as it was now observed with great splendor and magnificence. And when the festival was ended, they went out into the country and purged it, and cleansed the city of all the pollution of the idols. The king also gave order that the daily sacrifices should be offered, at his own charges and according to the law, and appointed that the tithes and the first fruits should be given by the multitude to the priests and Levites, that they might constantly attend upon divine service, and never be taken off from the worship of God. Accordingly, the multitude brought together all sorts of their fruits to the priests and the Levites. The king also made garners and receptacles for these fruits, and distributed them to every one of the priests and Levites, and to their children in one form of divine worship. Now when the king had settled these matters after the manner already described, he made war upon the Philistines, and beat them, and possessed himself of all the enemy's cities, from Gaza to Goth. But the king of Assyria sent to him, and threatened to overthrow all his dominions, unless he would pay him the tribute which his father paid him formerly. But King Hezekiah was not concerned at his threatenings, but depended on his piety towards God, and upon Isaiah the prophet, by whom he inquired and accurately knew all future events. And thus much shall suffice for the present concerning this King Hezekiah. Chapter 14 How Shalmaneser took Syria by force, and how he transplanted the ten tribes into Media and brought the nation of the Cuthians into their country, in their room. When Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, had it, told, had it told him, that Hoshea, the king of Israel, had sent privately to So, the king of Egypt, desiring his assistance against him, he was very angry, and made an expedition against Samaria, in the seventh year of the reign of Hoshea. But when he was not admitted into the city by the king, he besieged Samaria three years, and took it by force in the ninth year of the reign of Hoshea, and in the seventh year of Hezekiah, king of Jerusalem, and quite demolished the government of the Israelites, and transplanted all the people into Media and Persia, among whom he took king Hoshea alive. And when he had removed these people out of this their land, he transplanted other nations out of Cutha, a place so called, for there is still a river of that name in Persia, into Samaria, and into the country of the Israelites. So the ten tribes of the Israelites were removed out of Judea, the tribes of the Israelites were removed out of Judea nine hundred and forty seven years after their forefathers were come out of the land of Egypt, and possessed themselves of the country. But eight hundred years after Joshua had been their leader, and as I have already observed, two hundred and forty years, seven months, and seven days after they had revolted from Rehoabam, the grandson of David, and had given the kingdom to Jeroboam. And such a conclusion overtook the Israelites, when they had transgressed the laws, and would not hearken to the prophets, who foretold that this calamity would come upon them, if they would not leave off their evil doings. What gave birth to these evil doings, was that sedition which they raised against Rehoboam, the grandson of David, when they set up Jeroboam his servant to be their king, when, by sinning against God, and bringing them to imitate his bad example, made God to be their enemy, while Jeroboam underwent that punishment which he justly deserved. 
and now the king of Assyria invaded all Syria and Phoenicia in a hostile manner. The name of this king is also set down in the archives of Tyre, for he made an expedition against Tyre in the reign of Elulius, and Meander attests to it, who, when he wrote his chronology, and translated the archives of Tyre into the Greek language, gives us the following history. One whose name was Elulius reigned thirty-six years. This king, upon the revolt of the Scythians, sailed to them and reduced them again to a submission. Against these did the king of Assyria send an army, and in a hostile manner overrun all Phoenicia, but soon made peace with them all, and returned back. But Sidon and Ace and Palsaterus revolted, and many other cities there were which delivered themselves up to the king of Assyria. Accordingly, would not submit to him, the king returned, and fell upon them again, while the Phoenicians had furnished him with threescore ships, and eight hundred men to row them. And when the Tyrians had come upon them in twelve ships, and the enemy ships were dispersed, they took five hundred men prisoners, and the reputation of all the citizens of Tyre was thereby increased. But the king of Assyria returned, and placed guards at their rivers and aqueducts, who should hinder the Tyrians from drawing water. This continued for five years, and still the Tyrians bore the siege, and drank of the water they had out of the wells they dug. And this is what is written in the Tyrian archives concerning Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria. But now the Cathians, who removed to Samaria, for that is the name they have been called by to this time, because they were brought out of the country called Cutha, which is a country of Persia, and there is a river of the same name in it. Them, according to their nations, which were in number five, brought their own gods into Samaria, and by worshipping them, as was the custom of their own countries, they provoked Almighty God to be angry and displeased at them, for a plague seized upon them, by which they were destroyed. And when they found no cure for their miseries, they learned by the oracle that they ought to worship Almighty God, as the method for their deliverance. So they sent ambassadors to the king of Assyria, and desired him to send them some of those priests of the Israelites whom he had taken captive. And when he thereupon sent them, and the people were by them taught the laws, and the holy worship of God, they worshipped him in a respectful manner, and the plague ceased immediately. And indeed they continue to make use of the very same customs to this very time, and are called in the Hebrew tongue Cutlands, but in the Greek tongue Samaritans. And when they see the Jews in prosperity, they pretend that they are changed, and allied to them, and call them kinsmen, as though they were derived from Joseph, and had by that means an original alliance with them. But when they see them falling into a low condition, they say they are no way related to them, and that the Jews have no right to expect any kindness or marks of kindred from them. But they declare that they are sojourners, that come from other countries. But of these we shall have a more seasonable opportunity to discourse hereafter. End of Book 9, Chapters 13 and 14 End of Book 9